Hi everybody, welcome back to another lecture on the creative process and our final lecture on the sixth aspect of the creative process, the return home. This is where we bring our ideas to life. We actually manifest them, right? There's an aspect of the creative process where we have to put in the work and the effort and strategize and plan and think critically in order to arrange our time and resources to the creation of something. No longer are we just playing around and exploring with ideas. We have to focus our energies in order to actually manifest something into the world. And in some sense, what we do then is redefine our ordinary world. Well, we're going to take a look to see how that works within this lecture. So remember, oftentimes, this can be the most difficult aspect of the creative process because we are being pulled in two directions. On one hand, we want safety and security of the ordinary world. We want formal structure so that we have a sense for how to approach our goals. And in some sense, we want people to define our goals for us because that alleviates the problem of choice. But then there's a side of us that wants freedom, that wants to make our own choices, that wants to explore and play and, and doesn't want to be confined by structure and order that's imposed on us by other people. So these two forces are pulling at us during the creative process, and it's in the sixth aspect in which we have to hold that tension. And by holding that tension, we get energy in, that we can use to create and manifest, to transform and to change, to bring something new into our lives and into the world. Remember how difficult it is for some of us to just organize our thoughts in a way that we can easily figure out what to do next. For a lot of us, our minds are so muddled and, and the, the next step is so unclear that we just don't do anything at all. We feel like we have to um, give up or it's not worth it to continue on with the process to actually bring something new into the world and into our lives. And what might be useful is a sense for where it is we want to go. It's here where we have to define for ourselves what our goals should be, what our ultimate values should be. What is it that we want our painting to look like? What is it that we want our song to sound like? We have to envision that for ourselves and then let that guide us, right? Let that help us create our own structures. Do you see how we're kind of defining our ordinary world for ourselves? If it's being torn down, if we decide to, to destroy it, as Picasso tells us to do, well, then it's our responsibility to give ourselves structure and order and some direction. And for a lot of people, that's maybe the hardest thing to do, right? Define what we want for ourselves. So as we've been talking about for the past two lectures, the two biggest issues for us is the fact that we are efficient thinkers, which means we make judgments quickly, we make choices quickly based off heuristics and cognitive biases, as opposed to thinking carefully and strategizing what the best next step is to get us to where we want to go. So what do we have to do? We have to organize our thoughts somehow, organize our thoughts around some sort of strategy or a plan that will lead us to where it is we actually want to go. The other issue that we talked about in our last lecture was how sometimes we just don't have the energy. We just feel as if we're unmotivated to do anything. Maybe at some point in your projects you said, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to think about it anymore. The same thing with your life. Maybe there are things that you want to accomplish. Maybe there are things about your life you want to change and you just get overwhelmed. You just don't feel like trying anymore. This is the problem of motivation. And as we talked about with the last lecture, what we need to do is fuel that fire stir that energy that propels us forward. Remember, motivation is related to the term emotion, energy for movement. Emotion is what fuels that fire. As we've been talking about for the past two lectures, both of these naturally occur when we are in what Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, right? Psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi refers to as flow states. In last class or last lecture, we looked at how to enter these flow states, right? We can have a clear sense of purpose, a clear sense of a goal in mind. We can 
uh, keep track of progress, notice all sorts of movement forward and appreciate that. We can find a way to enter into that sweet channel where what we're doing is not too hard, yet what we're doing is not too easy. We can arrange and organize our projects and our lives in a way where we're not overwhelmed by the difficulty of the task and are not just bored out of our mind with how simple it is. It's that sweet spot, says Mihai, that gives us the energy. It's that sweet spot where the tension is just right, right? Where that energy can pull us forward, where we feel like we're so engaged with what we're doing that time just passes, right? And then four, we try to approach things by, by um, approaching them through intrinsic motivation, as opposed to thinking about what we get from something. We try, try to find some way to participate and engage in our activities, whether it's our projects and things we want to do in our lives. We try to engage in them in ways that inherently stimulate our intrinsic motivations. So these flow states, I mean, how might this look like for yourself? What might it look like to organize your time to enter these flow states, whether for your project or just for your life in general? How can we arrange our, our schedules to make flow states more likely? So this leads to our Creative Mind Spotlight for today, Scott Adams. How many of you are familiar with the name Scott Adams? Okay, well, Scott Adams had over 30 failed business attempts. How many failed business attempts uh, do you have under your belt? He classifies himself as a mediocre writer, a mediocre artist, a mediocre humorist. Yet, his net worth currently, or at least the time I wrote the slide, was $75 million. Wait a minute. How could somebody that fails so often, that's not really good at anything, be worth that much? Well, who is Scott Adams? Scott Adams is the creator of this cartoon. Do you recognize these characters? This is the Dilbert cartoon. Right? So let's take a look at one of his panels. Okay, so... Uh, I need this room for my meeting, says the boss. Wouldn't it make more sense for you to get a different room since we're already here? The guy says, all of the conference rooms are booked. Dilbert says, okay, when I guess we should, then I guess we should compare the importance of your meeting versus this one. And then the, uh, the boss says, that's not how it works. Uh, conference rooms go to the highest ranked manager. Dilbert says, it took me months to schedule this meeting. The, the boss says, scram. And then finally, when he hides his meeting, the boss says, the goal of this meeting is to figure out why nothing ever gets done around here. <laughs> this guy, $75 million net worth. How did he do it? <laughs> How did somebody that failed so often, that claims to be mediocre at being funny, mediocre at writing, mediocre at drawing, how did he do it? His philosophy was to build systems as opposed to focusing on goals. Okay, now what, what, what do you mean build systems? Well, he says, look, goals give you a target to aim for, which is good. It's good to have a sense for where you want to go. Like we talked about last time, goals act as, you know, magnets that pull us someplace, right? They give us direction. They give us energy to move. Both are good. But when we often just focus on goals, we seem to get the sense that we're in a failure state until we reach the goal. So if you can imagine your goal is to have you know $100,000 in your savings account, for a lot of us, setting that goal makes it feel as if we are failing Right? We're in a failure state. We're failing until that happens. It's kind of hard to get motivated if your mind always thinks you're in a failure state right? because you haven't reached that goal yet. So, says Scott Adams, what he does is he focuses on systems. Right? He sets up a system that he believes, another way of thinking about this, he sets up a habit right? that he believes will continually add value to what he's doing to himself and increase the odds of success. So what does that mean? It means that you set up a system 
that you regularly do or a habit that you regularly do. And by, by participating in that system, by continually doing that habit, you're actually improving something about yourself, right? You're increasing value for yourself. And by doing that, you increase your odds of actually attaining that goal. We'll take a look at some concrete examples in a second. And as a result, if you set the system and you tell yourself, I'm going to design a habit, I'm going to create a habit for myself, then by virtue of you just doing the habit, by virtue of you just participating in the system, it's a win, right? Because the goal here then, in a sense, isn't to attain the $100,000. The goal is just to do the habit. <laughs> the goal is just to have that regular thing that you participate in. You're, you're continually doing that system. And by doing it, it's a win, right? You are, you are successful, which is different than continually being in a failure state. And the experience of success, the fact that you're able to do the habit, it's like, yeah, I do the habit. Well, that acts as an intrinsic motivator because we all like to feel successful. We all feel, we all like the feeling of, you know, doing something that we set out to do. And then as a result, it just feeds itself. So let's take a look at an example he, he talks about. I mean, actually, should we do that first? Let's look at some other examples, right? Some concrete examples here. Weight loss. Okay, so let's say you have a goal, right? Uh, I'm going to have a target to lose 20 pounds within three months. Good. You have a goal. You have some that now you you have a direction. There's a way for you to organize your ideas and time because there's there is a a point to it. So it might be easier now to set up a structure for yourself to achieve this goal. Okay, so how can we set up a system for ourselves? The idea of a system is to go, you know, what sort of habits can I start to develop? What sorts of things can I do on a regular basis that would lead me to this goal? What do you think? What sorts of habits can you establish? What sorts of systems can you put in place that if you were to do something regularly, it would lead to this goal? Well, what's necessary for losing weight? you know, probably doing more physically with yourself. So if you're not working out now, what about just telling yourself, okay, I'll work out one hour every day. So instead of focusing on the 20 pounds, you know that in order to get there, you need to move more, you need to exercise more. So how about just set a system where you focus on working out one hour every day? Now see what happens here. One hour every day is probably less daunting than 20 pounds within three months. So you set that up as a system. So that means every time you actually do that one hour, it's a win. <laughs> and if you do that one hour tomorrow and you do that one hour the next day, those wins intrinsically motivate you because you feel good about the fact that you've done it. And that feeds itself and propels you to continue. What else would be part of your system? Maybe it's diet. Maybe you alter your diet in some way. Maybe right now you don't eat much vegetables, so you decide, okay, I'm going to add a salad to my meals. I'll do a salad once a day. Well, that's not too daunting to start off with a salad once a day. So you do your salad once a day. It's a system. And when you actually do it today or tomorrow, you celebrate it. I did it. I accomplished it, right? It's a win. The next day you do it, the following day, wow, two days in a row. That's a win. <laughs> the system then perpetuates itself because each win is an intrinsic motivator. And how hard is it to do a salad? Is it easier or harder, you think, to do that than it is to focus on the 20 pounds? Well, then you have the system that goes, and then every maybe every week or every couple weeks or every month, you assess, okay, how have I done in terms of my weight? And then you reevaluate the system and adjust, right? You design it so that it maybe gets you to the 20 pounds a little bit differently. Maybe instead of a salad, you decide to take out a meal, right? Instead of eating three meals a day, maybe you eat two, or you change the times that you eat it. And maybe you don't eat every morning right when you get up, and maybe you don't eat so late in the evening. You adjust based on the feedback you get throughout the process. But do you see how de-emphasizing the 20 and focusing on the system makes it a little bit less daunting and maybe a little bit easier for you to do? Do you see how that puts you maybe into that channel of flow between where something is too hard and something's too easy? Can you see how this kind of fulfills the requirements, what it takes to get into these flow states and how once you get started and you might be able to continue it 
and create flow in your life. How about writing a book? If you are a creative writer, what might a goal of yours be? Well, you might have a goal to have a book written within the next 12 months, right? A book written within the year. Well, that's a pretty daunting task, but at the least, if you have that goal, then you can you have something to organize your life around. You have some way, something to organize your ideas around. Like that's a good start, okay? So let's, how do we organize it? How do we organize our time? How do we organize our ideas to get to that goal? Well, let's think about a system. What sort of system could you put into place that will get you closer to writing that one book? You know, how about spending a certain amount of time every day writing? Might that get you to a book within a year? Yeah, possibly. Because in order to write a book, you need to spend time writing. <laughs> so how about you dedicate yourself to spend an hour writing each day? How much easier would that be to tackle than the one year? Right? I'm going to spend every morning, one hour a day, writing. That's not so hard. And you write tomorrow for one hour, it's a win because you actually participate in the system. You spend another hour the next day, another win because you participate in the system. And eventually, it perpetuates itself because it feels good to win. It feels good to succeed. Can you see how this might lead you into entering a flow state? You have the target in mind. You are able to monitor progress. Because as you write, you're going to see, you're going to build up your story. You're going to build up your book. You're going to see progress. Can you see how this puts you into that channel where it's not too hard, not too easy? Can you see how you be activating intrinsic motivations? One, because you probably love writing. So if you're writing for one hour every day, hopefully you actually enjoy it. And two, the success is an intrinsic motivator. Well, what about money? Let's talk about this wealth. Uh, example that we started out with earlier. What might a goal be? Well, maybe you do have a goal of having $100,000 in savings within 10 years. That's a pretty lofty goal for some of us, right? $100,000 in the, in the bank within 10 years. Okay, so let's break this up. You have that goal. Now we, now we know where we need to go. What sort of structure can we implement for ourselves? What kind of order can we put into our lives to get us there? What sorts of habits do you think you would need or could be useful to you to get to that goal? Well, one very important habit that lots of financial experts tell us to do is to automatically save, right? For a lot of us, our paychecks come in and then it just like disappears because we spend unconsciously. Well, how about we make it unconscious for us to save? <laughs> how about we set it up so that every month we put a certain amount of money directly into savings or directly into some sort of um, investment. So every month, a couple hundred dollars automatically gets put into that investment or gets automatically put into savings. So that within a year before you know it, right, you have a few thousand dollars already saved and you wouldn't have done anything other than just set up the automatic transfer one time. How easy is that? How easy would that be to do? Automatically set it up so that money is transferred from your savings where your check comes in or your checking account where your check comes in to some sort of investment. Just automatically set it aside so you don't have to think about it anymore. And you're automatically building wealth. And at the end of every year, you can take a look and you see how much money you have. And then you might learn more throughout the course of the year. right? And then you adjust your strategy. right? Maybe you can focus on spending less Maybe you can focus on changing the type of investment you put that money into. But can you see how that would feed itself? When after a few months you look and you're like, wow, man, there's like $600 in that thing. And then after a few months after that, it's like, whoa, there's like $1,200 in that thing. How that could be motivational to you to see that money or that account grow. One thing you could do is to have a spending fast one day a week, right? So there, every, every week, one of those days, you don't spend any money. You don't buy anything with cash. You don't buy anything with credit. You don't buy anything with your debit card. Um, I, there's a, probably a few of us that are used to just spending unconsciously every every day. You know, I want to get the latte. I want to get the shoes. I want to pay for um, this meal. How about just one day a week? Make it a habit where one day a week, just don't spend. And then at the end of the month, see how much money, or how much less you spent that month, how much extra you saved compared to the previous month. Keep track of that feedback. 
can you imagine the feeling you get if you notice how much you'd save from just having a spending fast once a day? Can you imagine how looking at that difference could make you feel really good? Wow, man, I saved like $300 this month from just having a spending fast once a week. $300, that's awesome. I can put all that $300 into my, into my savings and have that money grow even faster. Can you imagine how good that would feel and how that perpetuates itself and how you end up being even more motivated to do it and to even maybe save more and right and maybe learn more about investing and can you see how that puts you into a flow state let's talk about relationships now um uh, scott adams has a personal example of this right uh, from his high school days um, so let's let's say you have a goal of being in a committed relationship by next year okay and if you're a person that hasn't been in one for a while or maybe ever this might seem like a very daunting goal be in a committed relationship within within the year okay so that's a goal it's good we have a place to go to we have a target or something that pulls us that it gives us energy and now we have to create structure right with that goal we have to create structure for ourselves in other words create a system okay well what sorts of habits could you develop so here was the um, anecdote that that Scott Adams shared about his high school days. So similarly, um, Scott Adams, when he was a kid in high school, had this one girl that he really wanted to go out with, right? So what what was his plan? Well, like many of us, his idea would be, okay, I'm 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 I want to go out with somebody. There's a girl I want to go out with. I'm going to spend my time trying to improve myself and work on myself, and eventually I'll be a, a type of person that she's going to want. Okay, so she, he, in that case, had a goal. I'm going to go out with somebody. And I, there's that one person that I know I'm going to go out with. So I'm going to focus on doing whatever I can to attain that goal. So his focus was on that goal, getting that one girl in high school to go out with him. His buddy had a different approach. His buddy had a system. His buddy said, well, shoot, I, instead of focusing on that one major goal, finding that one person that I want to go out with, instead what I'll do is I'm going to ask, people out all the time. <laughs> I'm going to ask this girl out this week. I'll ask that girl out the next week. I'm going to ask this person out next week. That's his system. Well, let's think about what that does to somebody. Instead of focusing on one person, getting that one person to go out with you, this person was more focused on getting, continually getting into dates with people, asking people out. Okay, so what would happen to you if you started to ask people out on a consistent basis? One is you're going to get way more comfortable talking to people that you're attracted to. That's a pretty good skill, right? Just like writing every day, build your skill. Just like exercising every day and eating healthy every day, that builds a certain type of skill that increases your value. In this sense, you ask somebody out frequently, like once a week, well, you're in. You're enhancing your ability to talk to people. You're enhancing your ability to be not afraid of people and rejection. Right? Both of those are good skills to have when you're trying to find relationships. And what else happens? Well, he's going to go out on way more dates <laughs> by virtue of the numbers, and he's going to have a greater probability of actually finding somebody that he's compatible with because he developed a system. So for yourselves, I mean, what is it you value in life? What is it that you want? So there's your goal. And now you can organize yourselves in a way to attain it. Find a way to get into flow states to attain it. Scott Adams' approach is to create a system. In our language, we'd say, well, you create your structure. You create your habits. Can you, can you, can you get a feeling for what we're saying here? You program yourself. You're defining your ordinary world, right? So reordering, right? bringing your ideas to life, the return home is about you now, not running away from order and structure, but you creating it, you designing it. Can you see how that integrates the two different parts of the creative process? The ordinary world of order and then the exploratory playful world of disorder how if you take responsibility you can actually program your ordinary world 
You condition yourself. You create your habits as opposed to letting the world do it for you. Can you see how this is an integration of both halves of our brain? The half that has skills, that thinks analytically, that thinks logically, that has habits, with the other half that is exploratory and playful and divergent thinking and has cognitive flexibility. You use both to create whatever it is you want to make, whether it's a new piece of art, a new song, a new business, whether it's creating a new relationship, or whether it's transforming your life somehow to become a different person. The hope now is that with these ideas about the sixth aspect, you can move forward with your projects, hopefully not be overwhelmed, hopefully find a way to motivate yourself to get stuff done. But obviously, more importantly, I hope you're able to use this somehow to make it, to, to get a sense for how to more easily move through the natural transformations in life that you'll go through, right? So that anytime you experience adversity, anytime you, ex you experience trepidation about change, that you embrace it knowing that, no, this is part about what it means to, to live life is to change and transform and grow. You shouldn't be necessarily scared of, of difficult situations. You shouldn't necessarily be scared of chaos. You shouldn't necessarily be scared of, of routine either. You shouldn't necessarily be scared of structure. Both are necessary to create something new and both are what we go through all the time anyway, right? Because that's what it means to, to live a life.